All right, so number 10 on this list is going to be OpenShot uh, Video Editor. Now, there are, are a lot of video editors out there on Linux, and I honestly think that OpenShot is the best. Not only because it seems to work on no matter what um, Linux OS you have, uh, it also has so many features, and on top of it being open source and free, it literally can do a lot of the things that I really need to get done when it comes to making projects, <clears throat> when it comes to editing videos, doing slideshows, really anything. So kudos to OpenShot. Now number nine on this list is going to be Pigden uh, Instant Messenger. Now you'll see right here, I actually don't have an account signed up for it. I don't really use Pig Pigden much, but I know that it's a very good application and I had to put it on this list because what it is is it's an international sort of app that lets you use all of your services out there, at least the popular uh, IMing services. And so you can use AIM uh, all the way down to MSN using Yahoo and most importantly probably for most people is being able to use that Facebook Messenger uh, app right there. And so you can log into all these, manage your accounts, use them and then uh, not have to really worry about going to all those different websites to talk to people which is really awesome. Now number eight on this list is going to be good old Skype and for people who don't know Skype has recently dropped an app or a uh, piece of software for the Linux community and so now you can always use your Skype services and do your video chats on Linux which is awesome it's still free from Skype to Skype users and honestly while I'm not a big user of Skype I know many people across the world are and so I'm definitely going to have uh, I'm definitely going to have to put this on the list. Now number seven on this list is going to be getting down to text editors and uh, while there are so many awesome text editors out there and personally I've really really when it comes to doing uh, uh, doing editing or writing some code on Linux which I'll be honest guys I usually do most of it on Windows sorry don't hate me <clears throat> but um, when it comes down to actually doing some work on Linux uh, I really like using Vim in the past. However, recently so many people have really, 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 really uh, been using Sublime and it seems like it's sort of taking over the newer community of Linux and so I'm going to put Sublime on the list because honestly it's pretty good. It has a lot of features, it has a lot of in-depth uh, personality to it, it recognizes all types of code and also it's very malleable and has a nice GUI that you can actually get around and so for people who actually care about that whole front end work it really you know is helpful and it's nice. Now number six is going to be Dropbox and for those of you who are wondering where the actual app uh, like graphical interface is, it doesn't really have one except when you open up and once you log in it uh, actually integrates with your manager, your file manager or at least the Dolphin file manager since that's what I have installed here. And by the way guys this is um, uh, Manjaro Linux uh, by the way and this is the KDE theme just in case people are wondering. So as you can see right here, I have this little pop-out menu I can use where I can launch the website. And also, if I go into my file manager, I now have access to all my files. And for people who don't know, Dropbox is pretty much the most popular uh, cloud storage service out there on the web. Unfortunately, Dropbox doesn't give you a whole lot of storage because I guess they, they probably know how popular they are and the fact that they're the only cloud storage service that's popular out there and secure and actually available on all operating systems and even mobile devices. But uh, <clears throat> it's still awesome, and I love using them, and I like how I can access all of my files right here from my file manager, just like it's integrated into the cloud with you know an Apple device or Microsoft. Number five is going to be good old LibreOffice, and uh, for people who don't know, LibreOffice is pretty much the most popular, at least competing with OpenOffice, the most popular um, office m management suite out there. Uh, when it comes to Linux and open source because I mean it's not Microsoft Office but R Microsoft Office isn't really an option and Microsoft Office isn't free and uh, LibreOffice is amazing it has all the tools that Microsoft Office would have which is writer documents spreadsheets you can do presentations you can do the drawing you can do the mathematic formulas and even use the database uh, app to I guess make databases. I honestly never use that app actually. Really it just comes down to writer documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and maybe occasionally using the drawing uh, suite, but really I don't use the rest. Alright, now number four is going to be a music player and a very popular music player 
And this may be debated amongst the Lynx community of what the best music player is because there are so many, but I'm going to put Clementine on this list. Um, personally, there's another one I really love, and that's called Tomahawk, but uh, because it's not really available on all the OSs and in even building it is quite complicated, uh, I, I'm going to put Clementine on here. And uh, Clementine is pretty much your best alternative to iTunes or whatever music player you want to use out there. It has a library, search options, you can put all of your music music and import it in here. Uh, you can set a playlist, you can, you know, access all of your online uh, and services and also like music players, um, which is really cool, like Spotify and Pandora and things like that. Um, you can connect your devices uh, and, you know, transfer music and things like that. You can check the song info, artist info, and download, you know, pictures and album art and all those other good uh, goodies. Uh, now, if you're looking right now, the the actual design is really clunky and it's really old school, and there's nothing that makes you go pow. You know, it's nothing that, that amazes you, but it's very solid, and that is why Clementine is on this list and why it's on many other people's list as the number one music player for Linux. All right, guys. So number three on this list is going to be wonderful and uh, so important. GIMP, which stands for the GNU or GNU Image Manipulation Program, and it's pretty much the most popular open source and Linux version of Photoshop and it's also available on all the other operating systems out there like Windows and you know for Mac and stuff and it's really awesome I've used it for so many years um, it was on my previous list because it's awesome and it still has to be on the new list because there's still nothing in my opinion better but there are some that are getting up there and trying to compete but they just need a little bit more work done and they might just overtake GIMP one day um, but as for people who don't know, this application has pretty much all the things that Photoshop would have in it. It just has sort of a older looking UI and it might not be as graceful while you're performing these actions, but you can open any type of photo, you can make animations, you can add all types of filters, you can do whatever you want, you can adjust gradients and you can change and create pretty much whatever you want. Alright guys, so number two on this list is going to be VLC Media Player, which for people who don't know is the number one media player for really any operating system, period. VLC has a, an incredible, incredible, incredible <clears throat> and powerful capability to play videos of all types, of all formats, with all different types of codecs, audio, or video. And uh, this is essentially important because there's so many OSs and so many video players and media players out there that look nice, but they really can't play half the stuff you have. You have especially older files from years and years ago um, because there's so many different formats that are changing and updating over time and VLC is awesome at this it usually works flawless no matter what you're doing and it's free and open source so how can you not uh, love that plus the VLC team has always been good to uh, the internet community now number one on this list and for people who might have already guessed is going to be Mozilla Firefox and uh, just like on my previous list Mozilla was number one and it's still number one because Mozilla is amazing the team is amazing they've always been great they've always stayed true to you know privacy and also being you know a good tech company that doesn't take everyone's data and do all types of horrible things with it and also create this open source browser that's you know grown and took in sort of the hearts of the Linux community and on top of that it's it's flawless it works on all the OS's out there it doesn't matter where which one you're on you'll have Firefox as an option you know and uh, it has all the great features you want and personally and personally just like on the uh, before I say that you know I also love Chrome I would tell people if you have a Linux uh, OS, you should have Firefox and you should have Chrome because Chrome has many features such as the integrated HTML capabilities and all that that Firefox sort of lacks because of certain rules and regulations that were put into place. But you have to have Firefox. It is essential. And uh, this is why Firefox is number one and also uh, number one Linux and open source browser in my eyes. But alright guys, that was the top 10 most um, important and essential Linux applications or software out there. Not including like essential or pre-configured things like tweak tools and all that. I consider those uh, things that should be installed on all Linux operating systems from the get-go. There shouldn't even be an option or people shouldn't even have to install that. I mean, if you're getting a fully integrated and fully created and uh, like designed OS that's for intermediate or beginner users they shouldn't have to go and search for that kind of stuff <clears throat> or like Synaptics Package Manager and things like that everyone should just have that 
But uh, uh, so that was the 10 that people don't necessarily have to have, but should definitely get. And uh, also check out some extra apps. I have a few on this list that I'm going to talk about. And then also I definitely want more people to comment and share their apps and new software and all types of cool stuff because Linux has so much. And so I would say also check out Simple Screen Recorder, which is what I'm using right now, which is amazing. And it is so hard to find a screen recorder software on Linux that works so good. Um, Kden Live, K3B Disk Writer and Burner, Minitube, SM Player, Master PDF Editor, Firelight, Mozilla SeaMonkey, Digicam, Webmin, Steam, Pythos, Audacity, Thunderbird, Getit, Vim. So all those are also really great apps uh, that you should check out. Um, thanks for watching guys. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. It is so important uh, and so helpful for you guys to hit that like button and that subscribe button.